Good morning, church. I don't know if you can see me. I hope you can. We're just kicking off the stream. Welcome to church. Even though you might not be here, it still is church because church is wherever the body of Christ is gathered. And that can be at home with uh, your family. It could be in the hall having a cup of tea with Cafe Church. But we are still gathered here as your church, as God's church. Um, And we are if you haven't noticed through the, the last few weeks of preaching, we are looking at God's kingdom. And, and so these songs that we are going to sing and we're going to worship God about today, focus on God's kingdom because God's kingdom is here and it is coming as well. So there is that here, not yet element. And so we want to thank God for what he's done through Christ to establish his kingdom here on earth and what's going to happen soon with his kingdom everlasting. So let's, let's worship God together. Blessing and honor, glory and power, be unto the ancient of days. From every nation, all of creation, will bow before the ancient of days. Blessing and honor, glory and power, be unto the ancient of days. From every nation, all of creation will bow before the ancient of days. Every tongue, every tongue in heaven and earth shall declare your glory. Every knee shall bow at your throne. In worship you will be exalted, O oh God. And your kingdom shall not pass away, O oh ancient of days. Blessing and honor. Blessing and honor, glory and power, be unto the ancient of days. From every nation, all of creation, bow before the ancient of days. Every tongue, every tongue in heaven and earth shall declare your glory. Every knee shall bow at your throne. In worship you will be exalted, O God, and your kingdom shall not pass away, O ancient of days. Your kingdom shall reign over all the earth, sing unto the ancient of days. For none can compare to your matchless worth. Sing to the ancient of days. Your kingdom shall reign. Your kingdom shall reign over all the earth. Sing to the ancient of days. For none can compare to your matchless worth. Sing to the ancient of days. Every tongue, every tongue in heaven and earth shall declare your glory. Every knee shall bow at your throne. In worship you will be exalted, O God, and your kingdom shall not pass away, O ancient of days. O ancient of days. O ancient of days. And we ask that God's kingdom will come here on earth. Not just through what he's doing, but through us as his vessels. Your glorious cause. Your glorious cause, O God, engages our hearts. May Jesus Christ be known. Wherever we are, we ask not for ourselves, but for your renown. The cross has saved us, so we pray your kingdom come. Let your kingdom come, let your will be done, so that everyone Everyone might know your name. Let your song be heard everywhere on earth. 
until your sovereign work on earth is done. Let your kingdom come. Give us your strength. Give us your strength, O oh God, and courage to speak. Perform your wondrous deeds through those who are weak. Lord, use us as you want, whatever the test. By grace, we'll preach your gospel till our dying breath. Let your kingdom come. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done so that everyone might know your name. Let your song be heard everywhere on earth till your sovereign work on earth is done. Let your kingdom come. Let your kingdom come. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done so that everyone might know your name. Let your song be heard everywhere on earth till your sovereign work on earth is done. Let your kingdom come. Let your kingdom come. Jesus, God's righteousness revealed. The Son of Man, the Son of God, His kingdom comes. Jesus, redemption sacrifice. Now glorify, now justify, His kingdom comes. And this kingdom will know no end, and its glory shall know no bounds. For the majesty and power of this kingdom's king has come and this kingdom's reign and this kingdom's rule and this kingdom's power and authority Jesus God's righteousness Jesus, the expression of God's love, the grace of God, the word of God revealed to us. Jesus, God's holiness displayed. Now glorified. Justify his kingdom comes, and this kingdom will know no end, and his glory shall know no bounds. For the 
majesty and power of this kingdom's king has come and this kingdom's reign and this kingdom's rule and this kingdom's power and authority Jesus God's righteousness and this kingdom will know no end and its glory shall know no bounds for the majesty and power of this kingdom's king has come and this kingdom's reign and this kingdom's rule and this kingdom's power and authority Jesus, God's righteousness revealed. Let the king of my heart, let the king of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from, oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life, oh, he is my song. You are good good oh you are good good oh you are good good oh, oh you are good good oh let the king of my heart let the king of my heart be the wind inside my sails, the anchor in the waves, oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the fire inside my veins, the echo of my days, oh, he is my song. King of my heart, let the king of my heart be the wind inside my sails, the anchor in the waves. Oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the fire inside my veins, the echo of my days. Oh, he is my song. You are good, good. Oh, you are good, good. Oh, you are good. gonna let you're never gonna let me down you're never gonna let you're never gonna let me down you're never gonna let you're never gonna let me down you're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down you're never gonna let you're never gonna let me down you're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You are good, good. Oh, you are good, good. Oh. Never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're 
You're never going to let me down. You're never going to let, you're never going to let me down. You're never going to let, you're never going to let me down. You're never going to let, you're never going to let me down. You're never going to let, you're never going to let me down. You are good, good. Oh, you are good, good. Oh, you are good, good. Oh, you are good, good. of God manifests his glory as we gather together in his name and where two or three are gathered there am I in the midst a uh, wonderful welcome to Paul and Gloria Anders and we're really looking forward to hearing all about your adventures around outback New South Wales uh, and a welcome to Peter and we trust that you feel at home with us. Uh, the way we do church is changing every week and we're looking at new changes for next week. We earnestly covet your prayers as we navigate this tricky season. All of us, of course, are trying our best to uh, stay safe, but also move forward and learn to move out of all the restrictions that we've been under. So we ask for your prayers as we open up as we gather for congregational worship, as we plan towards Christmas and the new year and all the different ways of doing church meetings and new meetings to start. We appreciate your prayers. Uh, and you may have heard that uh, they announced on Friday that uh, Parks has one case of COVID-19, but yesterday they announced that that was a mistake uh, it wasn't even in the western New South Wales. That particular case, maybe another place is called Parks. Uh, I'm being facetious. I don't really know, but my best guess is it may have been Parks in the ACT. But certainly we have no cases in Parks and we need to give thanks for the way he has blessed our community. I'll be reading today from Matthew chapter 13. And just a reminder that the Awakening Prayer Meeting is on this Tuesday night, 7.30pm at 43 Page Street, which is Judy Batts' home. Last week we mentioned how when God asked Abram to look at the vast array of stars in the heavens, God had you and me in mind with those stars all who believe in Christ are stars of the universe and God had us in his mind before the creation of the heavens and the earth. God wants you to know deep within who you really are in Christ and the rich future and rich its inheritance that you have in him. The revelation of Christ's glory is perfectly entwined with the revelation of the glory that you have in him. And Jesus speaks to us much through parables in Matthew 13. Great multitudes gathered to Jesus at the edge of the Sea of Galilee at Capernaum. And so Jesus spoke to them in parables, starting with the parable of the sower, which we know well, 
And then in Matthew 13, 24, Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds. And these weeds, we understand, are darnel that look like wheat until they bear fruit. And there the difference is. In fact, the fruit of the darnel weed is noxious, poisonous to both humans and to animals. But you can't tell them apart until they bear fruit. Weeds among the wheat. And then he went away. When the wheat sprouted and formed heads, then the darnel weeds also appeared. The owner's servants came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where then did the weeds come from? An enemy did this, he replied. The, the servants asked him, Do you want us to go and pull him up? No, he answered, because while you are pulling up the weeds, you will uproot the wheat with them. Let them both grow together until the harvest. At that time I will tell the harvesters, First, collect the weeds and tie them in bundles to be burned. Then gather the wheat and bring them into my barn. He then told him another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and planted it in his field. Though it is the smallest of all seeds, yet when it grows, it is the largest of garden plants and becomes a tree. So the birds come and perch in its branches. He told them still another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed into 60 pounds of flour until it worked all through the dough. Jesus spoke these things to the crowd in parables. He did not say anything to them without using a parable. So was fulfilled what was spoken through the prophet. I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things hidden since the creation of the world. Then he left the crowd and went into the house. His disciples came to him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He answered, The one who sowed the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed stands for the people of the kingdom. The weeds are the people of the evil one, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. As the weeds are pulled up and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send out his angels and they will weed out of his kingdom everything that causes sin and all who do evil. They will throw them into the blazing furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Whoever has ears, let them hear. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again, and then in his joy went and sold all he had and bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. Once again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was let down into the lake and caught all kinds of fish. When it was full, the fishermen pulled it up on the shore. When they sat down and collected the good fish in baskets, but they threw the bad away. This is how it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the blazing furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all these things? Jesus asked. Yes, they replied. Then the righteous shall shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. The righteous are those who have been made right with God through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and his finished work, his finished atoning work on the cross 
and through obedience to him. The one who sowed the good seed in his field is the son of man. The field is the world. Behold, the sovereignty of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the Lord of the harvest. The field is the world and the whole world is his. The whole world belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ. And he is sowing. That is what he is doing now. He is sowing good seed all around the world by his amazing grace. For it is by grace that you have been saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, so that no one can boast. Jesus himself is sowing good seed right around the world by means of the proclaiming of the good news and making people come alive. People who are dead he makes come alive by the good news and through faith in him. If you believe in Jesus, you are good seed. You are good seed in his field. The harvest is guaranteed by Jesus' own sovereign authority and power. Therefore, Jesus pronounces the chief sign of the end times in Matthew 24, 14, where Jesus gives us many signs of end times. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, all families, all people groups, and then the end will come. In his sovereignty, his absolute authority, he gives the great commission to his good seed. Matthew 28, 18. Then Jesus came to his disciples and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. In Mark it says, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. Surely I am with you always, even to the very end of the age." Jesus said in John 4, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Don't you have a saying? It's still four months till harvest. I tell you, open your eyes and look at the fields. They are ripe for harvest. Even now the ones who reap, draw a wage and harvest a crop for eternal life so that the sower and the reaper may be glad together. This is the saying, thus the saying, one sows and another reaps is true. Go and sow in the promise of the harvest, the promise of the harvest in the Lord's sovereign plan. It's okay to look at secular news, not a bad idea, but what we really need to do is look at what Christ is doing in the world today and we need to have sources of news of finding out just how the Lord is sowing good seed around the world. And so may you have good sources. May you receive uh, information about where God is doing the harvest. We receive information from so many places now that it is dangerous to be identified as a believer in Christ. So it's, a lot of it is cloak and dagger. We support the walls in a certain country and there's been a great harvest through our giving in the mountains around the, the city where they live. We don't publicly mention the city. We don't mention who the leaders are because we put their lives at risk when it becomes knowledge. But Christ is gathering Christ is sowing seed right around the whole world. You and I are called to be a part of that. Now the enemy is the devil and he is sneaky, conniving, cunning, mischievous and malicious. We need to be sober and vigilant as we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against spiritual forces of darkness. The enemy plants bad seed whose fruit is full of deadly poison. 
the good seed and the bad seed grow side by side and it's hard to tell a difference until they bear fruit. It means that there is pressure, tensions and suffering until the harvest at the end of the age. The apostles repeatedly tell us that in the last days there will be terrible times because of the seeds of the evil one being mingled amongst the good seed. The early church was challenged by the seed of the devil. In every letter, Paul needed to warn against the poison of false teachers. There was a whole gamut of false teaching trying to infect the good seed, ranging from legalism to libertinism. Legalism, for example, you must keep the rules to be saved. You must be circumcised if you want to be saved. An example of libertinism, it doesn't matter what you do in your body, but what, what matters is what you do in your spirit. What you do in your body doesn't matter. God is love and he'll accept everybody. I hope you know that to be a false teaching. There are different Greek words. Oh, I'll clarify that. He saves people from every background, but every person is called to repent. There are different Greek words for judging. In the Sermon of the Mount, Jesus says, Do not judge in a condemning way, lest you be judged. But Jesus goes on to teach us in the very same chapter that we must judge in a discerning way. We don't judge in a condemning way, but we must learn how to judge in a discerning way, lest we be deceived, lest we be overtaken by poison coming from those who are not good seed. We must learn how to discern the fruit of those who come to us with their teaching. Matthew 7, verse 15. Watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ferocious wolves. By their fruit, you will recognize them. You must take time to examine their fruit, and by their fruit, you will recognize them. Do not do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, by their fruit, you will recognize them. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and in your name perform miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. You ones who practice lawlessness. One relatively recent popular poison is the teaching that everyone will get into heaven because God is love. People who teach such things show that they ignore what Jesus repeatedly teaches and they know they don't know God who is absolutely holy. God is absolutely holy. No one who has sin in their life can come near to him or enter into heaven, the holy place. Therefore, none of us are worthy of heaven because all of us have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That's why Jesus died, to cleanse us of all sin and to lead us in repentance and righteousness to make us fit for heaven. Those who refuse to humble themselves and refuse God's way of salvation will experience weeping and gnashing of teeth. Great sorrow, pain and anguish. I've heard many people reject the teaching of God's judgment and they will say things like, I just follow the Sermon of the Mount. 
But that statement in itself indicates that they don't know, really know what Jesus teaches in the Sermon on the Mount. He repeatedly mentions eternal judgment and hell. For example, Matthew 5, several times in verse 22, whoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment and whoever says you fool shall be in danger of hell fire. Verse 30, and if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off, cast it from you, for it is more profitable for you that one of your members perish than for your whole body to be cast into hell and as we read just a bit earlier in chapter 7 not everyone who says to me Lord Lord will enter the kingdom of heaven Jesus will say to them I never knew you away from me you who do evil study the sermon of the mount for yourself Revelations 20 gives the vision of final judgment and it says and everyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Spurgeon comments, magistrates and churches may remove the openly wicked from their society, the outwardly good who are unworldly worthless, they must leave, for the judging of hearts is beyond their spheres. We judge not to condemn, but but to discern, to discern their fruit. We must examine their fruit. The good seed bears good fruit, including constantly being ready for Christ's glorious return and so faithfully serving him in whatever circumstances they are in. When Jesus talks about the signs of end times, we tend to give too much attention to the signs and too little attention to what Jesus calls us to do. In Matthew 24, there's a list of signs and we especially need to heed the conclusion, Matthew 24, 42, therefore keep watch because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. But understand this, If the owner of the house had known at what time of night the thief was coming, he would have kept watch and would not have let let his house to be broken into. So you also must be ready because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. Who then is a faithful and wise servant whom the master has put in charge of the servants in his household to give them their food at the proper time? It will be good for that servant whose master finds him doing so when he returns. Truly, I tell you, he will put him in charge of all his possessions. But suppose that servant is wicked and says to himself, my master is staying away a long time. And he then begins to beat his fellow servants and eat and drink with drunkards. The master of that servant will come on a day that when he does not expect him and an hour that he is not aware of, he will cut him to pieces and assign him a place with the hypocrites where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Jesus then tells the parables, several more parables. Firstly, the parable of the five wise and five foolish versions of wise ones were ready and waiting and watching with oil in their lamps. And also he goes on to talk about the separation of the sheep from the goats at the end of the age on the basis of how they care for needy people. Be always ready, always watchful, always prayerful, always compassionate, always letting your heart be moved with compassion for needy people people until he comes then the righteous shall shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father this is another allusion to the book of Daniel Jesus constantly alludes to Daniel and in Daniel 12 verse 1 at that time the ark Archangel Michael, the great prince who protects your people, will arise. There will be a time of distress such as not has happened from the beginning of nations 
until then. But at that time, your people, everyone who is found written in the book, that is the book of life, will be delivered. Multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake, some to everlasting life, others to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. Notice there's a continual connection between the shining and being winners of souls, those who share the good news, who live out the good news. Blessed assurance, visions of rapture now bursts on my sight. The Lord grants you visions of end times, series of visions, including visions of the glory that shall be revealed in those who believe in Jesus Christ. Are you able to look at other believers and see how they will appear when Christ comes in great regal glory and splendor? The Lord grant you the series of visions react related to the end of this age. The judge Deborah ends her song of victory with the vision of the righteous shining like the sun. Judges 5.31. So may all your enemies perish, Lord, but may all who love you be like the sun when it rises in its strength. Then the land had peace for 40 years. Colossians 1.27. Christ is in you the hope of glory. The Passion Translation, living within you is the Christ who floods you with the expectation of glory. This mystery of Christ embedded within us becomes a heavenly treasure chest of hope filled with the riches of glory for his people and God wants everyone to know it. Indeed, everyone will know it when Christ comes. Colossians 3, 4, when Christ who is our life appears, then you also will appear with him in the splendour of his glory. The Passion Translation, and as Christ himself is seen for who, who he really is, who you really are will also be revealed. Who you really are will also be revealed for you are now one with him in his glory. This revelation of the true glory of the redeemed children of God is also wrapped up in the redemption of all creation for the fall of Adam affected all the earth. Human activity, mankind's sinfulness has and does affect the whole world. But the revelation of the glory of Christ's good seed redeems the whole world as Paul unpacks in very rich detail in Romans chapter 8, starting from verse 16. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now, if we are God's children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, if indeed we share in his sufferings, and this includes the sufferings of living alongside those who are bad seed, in order that we may also share in his glory. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. There's birth pains all the unsettled things that have been happening are birth pains of a whole new liberation of all creation when the sons, the children of God, are revealed in glory. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to this present time with having floods yesterday in various parts 
of New South Wales. Not only so, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption to sonship, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved, but hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. I might jump through to verse 28. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew before the creation of the world, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. This imminent glory includes the indescribable transformation of our bodies in Philippians 3 verse 20, but our citizenship is in heaven and we eagerly await a saviour from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. As in Adam all die, so in Christ all are made alive. For he must reign until he has brought all of his enemies under, under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. The sun has one kind of splendour, the moon another, the stars another. The stars differ from star in splendour. So it will be in the resurrection of the dead. The body that is sown is perishable, it is raised imperishable. It is sown in dishonour. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. If there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual body. Then the righteous shall shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. You who believe in Jesus, who believe in the power of his cross, and the resurrection already are light, but your light is veiled. Your light is veiled. Isaiah 60 verse 1, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth and thick darkness all over the peoples, but the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light and kings to the brightness of of your dawn. The glory of God is in you, waiting to be unveiled at the return of Jesus Christ, but those who are discerning will already see the light shining. Philippians 2 verse 14, Do everything without grumbling or arguing, so that you may become blameless and pure, children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. The seed of God amongst the seed of the evil one. Then you will shine among them like stars in the sky as you hold firmly to the word of life. And that has a double meaning, that word. It also means holding forth the word of life. We, hold, we both hold firmly to the word of life and we hold forth the word of light. And then I will be able to boast on the day of Christ that I did not run or labour in vain. Jesus said in the Son of the Mount, Matthew 5, verse 14, You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. You are God's light in the world now. And the glory of your light is about to be revealed when Christ comes. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. I still find Acts 13, 47 an incredibly stunning verse. Paul is quoting Isaiah 49, 6. 
which is a powerful promise about the Messiah, but Paul applies it to believers. That's what stuns me. What is said about the Messiah is applied to those who are in the Messiah. Acts 13, 47, this is what the Lord has commanded us. I have made you a light for the Gentiles, that you may bring salvation to the ends of the earth. What a privilege, dear brothers and sisters, we have. Whoever has ears, let them hear. If you are able to understand this, you'd better respond. Jesus himself is calling for a heart and action response to his teaching. It begins with humbling ourselves before him and embracing his death in our place, asking and believing him for mercy to forgive and grace to enable us to live the life that is pleasing to him. It is only by grace we are saved. It is only by grace that we live the life that is pleasing to him. Let's pray. Thank you, dear Lord, that you are revealing your secrets of your kingdom. Thank you, dear Lord, that you said all these things knowing that you would lay down your life in order to redeem us and to make us your good seed. We humble ourselves before you as we share together the emblems of your death and resurrection. We ask for mercy, dear Lord Jesus. And I'll pray this in the first person because my heart constrains me that there are people hearing this message who need to respond and surrender. Dear Lord Jesus, forgive me for all of my sin. Cleanse me and lead me in true repentance. Thank you for dying for me in my place. Thank you that you love me so much with an everlasting love to redeem me and make me your good seed in the world. Come into my life and be total Lord of every aspect of my life. Have your way in my heart, in my mind, in my body, in everything that I have, everything I am, everything I do. I surrender to you. Let your grace flow in me, enabling me to do all the good you have called me to do, to bear good fruit, compassion, love, of watching and waiting and being ready, serving you with all my heart, regardless of all the ups and downs of life, just serving you, not looking for glory from man, but your glory. Be glorified in my life. Thank you, Lord. If you have genuinely received Jesus and his salvation, you are his good seed. And in, at any moment, the glory that is in you will be revealed and you will shine like the sun in the universe for all to see. You will shine. He has accepted you. You are his and he is yours. Christ is in you, the hope of glory. Seeing all that would be accomplished through the work of the cross, it says with joy, Jesus offered himself up and said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Take, eat, do this in remembrance of me. Thank you, Lord, for your salvation, the fullness of your salvation. Thank you, Lord. Let's eat together. The Lord Jesus sealed the covenant, the greatest covenant of all, which we often call the new covenant. He sealed it with his own blood. It is a blood covenant. 
once for all. He finished the atoning sacrifice and as he gave up his last breath, he said, it is finished. The blood of Jesus washes us from all sin and makes us pure and holy. It is only by the blood of Jesus that anyone can draw near to God, anyone can enter into heaven. By the blood, we are saved forever. Thank you, Lord, for forever salvation, fullness of salvation. We receive in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Bring your needs, your prayer needs to him. Thank you, Lord. We offer up our prayers to you. Thank you that your house is the house of prayer. We thank you, Lord, for Remembrance Day. We thank you for all who have defended the freedoms of our land, our nation, at the risk of their own lives. We thank you for the veterans. We pray for your provision of all the care that they need so that they can be fully restored from whatever trauma they experienced in defending our freedoms. We thank you, Lord, that you have done a marvellous work in our communities regarding COVID-19. And as we now go through the 91% fully vaccinated, give us wisdom to navigate this tricky season. Wisdom, Lord, to not only stay safe, but to move on and enjoy all the good things you have for us together. We ask, Lord, your provision and your guidance. Thank you that you are Jehovah Jireh and you provide all of our needs, even though we may be constrained. We ask for your provision. Provide work where it's needed, Lord. Provide guidance to each one of us to how to navigate this new season we are in. Guide us as a church, how we can meet, how we can worship together. We thank you for the SES. And again, they often risk their lives to rescue others and to secure homes that have been damaged. Be with them and keep them safe. We pray that you would stay the floods, that you would protect the town of Forbes, that there would be no damage to homes, Lord, and you would reduce the flood risk in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you for how you've been working in John Pierce, his remarkable recovery. Help him, we believe, for his ongoing full rehabilitation. We pray a powerful blessing of rich healing upon those who are seeing specialists this week or beyond, including Bill Lister and Fran Sams and Robin Heckendorf. We pray for the fullness of their healing. We thank you, Lord, that we can bring an offering to you. Lord, we ask so that you would use your offering as a part of seeing the completion of your vision. Thank you that you are sovereign Lord in the harvest. And we offer ourselves along with our giving that you would use us to bring good news to others. Use us, Lord to bring good news to others that there might be many, many more good seeds planted in your field. We lift up these and other prayers to you and we give you thanks in advance for your faithfulness. We bless you and praise you. Amen. As a conclusion, I bring to you 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labour in the Lord is not in vain. Be steadfast, immovable, always excelling in the work of the Lord, always doing your best and doing more than is needed, being continually aware that your labour, even to the point of exhaustion, 
in the Lord is not futile, futile nor wasted. It is never without purpose. We are fully assured that our union with the Lord makes our labour productive with fruit that endures for his glory. And all, God, all God's people said, Amen. God bless you. So to close us off, we're going we're gonna to sing a song because we are great. Uh, we want to be good seed in this world. And part of that good seed is we want to see Jesus lifted high and glorified in not just our lives, but the world we live in. We want to see Jesus lifted high. We want to see Jesus lifted high, a banner that flies across the land, that all men may see the truth and know that he is the way to heaven. We want to see Jesus lifted high, a banner that flies across the land, that all men may see the truth and know that he is the way to heaven. We want to see, we want to see, we want to see Jesus lifted high. We want to see, we want to see, we want to see Jesus lifted high. We want to see Jesus lifted high, a banner that flies across the land, that all men may see the truth and know that he is the way to heaven. We want to see Jesus lifted high, a banner that flies across the land, that all men may see the truth and know that he is the way to heaven. We want to see, we want to see, we want to see Jesus lifted high. We want to see, we want to see, we want to see Jesus lifted high. Step by step we're moving forward, little by little taking ground. Every pair of powerful weapons, strongholds come cumbling down and down and down and down. We want to see Jesus lifted high, a banner that flies across the land. But all men may see the truth and know he is the way to heaven. We want to see Jesus lifted high, a banner that flies across the land, that all men may see the truth and know that he is the way to heaven. We're going to see, we're going to see, we're going to see Jesus lifted high. We're going to see, we're going to see, we're going to see Jesus lifted high. We're going to see, we're going to see. We're gonna see Jesus lifted high. We're gonna see, we're gonna see, we're gonna see Jesus lifted high. And so as Jesus says at the end of Matthew 28, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always and to the very end of the age. So go out and be good seed in this, in this world, in our town, in our workplaces, and I'll see you guys next week.